To understand surgery, you have to know the basic principles about it. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shadi and welcome again for this new series about principles of surgery. The aim of this series is to understand the basic principles about surgery. So, in this video and the coming videos, we are going to talk about the flap, flap design, flap classification, and some instruments related to it. Let's get started. I want to define the flap as a tissue lifted from its normal position. It means in the donor side, it could be either moved to another side, which called the recipient side, or reflected to expose bone for surgery. So simply the purpose of the flap could be for the defect reconstruction as in case number one, or for surgical exposure or access as in case number two. There is a numerous types of blades used in surgery, but in our field in dentistry, we mainly use four types of blades, number 10, number 11, 12, and 15. If we look at number 10, we use it for skin. If we look at number 11, we use it in incision and drainage, like in case of abscess, because it has sharp pointed or tipped uh, end, so that's why we use it in incision and the drainage, to open the abscess. The number 12, we use it in the areas that inaccessible areas, like the tuberosity. Number 15, it's the most common use, and we use it in mucoperiosteal surgery. Okay, you have to differentiate between blade number 15 and blade number 10. In case of blade number 15, the cutting edge is smaller in comparison with blade number 10, which is bigger than that. So the result or the difference is quite obvious. So friends, let's take a look at our incision tool. At the top is the blade and down is the handle. Let's start uh, with the blade. The blade, this parts here as you see, number one is the slot for handle where the handle will be inserted. Number two is the spin. Number three is the tip which is sharp. And number four is the cutting edge where we cut. Okay, and the picture down is the handle. It's called Bard Barker 3. Okay, in Bard Barker 3, we use it for the blades number 10 and number 11 and number 12 and number 15. What does that mean? It means that we use it in oral surgery and dentistry. There is also another Bard Barker. Okay, we, but it's called Bard Barker 4. It mainly used from blades number 18 until 23. So we, we don't use it in oral surgery, okay? If we zoom this picture here, we will find it uh, three. So number three is our main concern. Let's take a, a look at the video now to know how to insert the needle and how to remove it safely. Open the blade packet from the arrow side or the peel side until you expose two thirds of the blade as here. Then you can use the blade holder to open it. You see the curve or the line bit, uh, in, uh, in the holder and, uh, and the blade. They should be adapted to each other in the same line like this. Okay, so you can rotate the blade. After that, you insert it like this to go with the flow with the needle in the uh, place until you feel a click or you hear a click. So it's now ready to use. You should use or hold the blade in 35 degree to 45 to 45 degree in a penny grasp, not. Uh, 80, uh, 80 uh, or 90 degree like this only in 35 or 45 maximum now to remove the needle 
you have just little bit to bend this part here, the, the part in, uh, uh, approximated the, to the holder like this, little bit bend to insert the holder, the tip of the holder inside. So they will be perpendicular to each other, as you see. The needle holder and the holder of the blade perpendicular. After that, by the thumb of the left hand here, just apply mild pressure okay so you will be in control you see mild pressure only will uh, push the blade out of the needle easily so you will not affect anyone beside you and you will not get embarrassed so now safely it's out now is the principles let's talk about some principles regarding to the flap uh, the first principle is the scalpel holding or the lancet holding uh, we have uh, three types of uh, scalpel holding the pin grasp uh, or the pencil grip we called it also pin grasp okay and we have also the fingertip grip and the power grip let's talk about the main our main concern the pin grab or the pencil grip we use it mainly on oral surgery uh, we use this as i said for you before we make it as a 35 degree with the tissue to 45 but i prefer 35 degree what is the advantage for this it's increased the accuracy or the let's say the accuracy okay and also decrease the surface contact or the contact surface with the uh, tissue okay the fingertip we use it uh, i forgot to tell you that we use it for short incisions okay so this is for oral surgery the fingertip grip we use it for long incisions what does that mean so for skin mainly okay we use it for skin so uh, about the power grip down here it's also used for long okay but uh, actually we don't use or we don't start the incision with this uh, technique because it's very uh, powerful grip we don't start with it. We use it uh, in conjunction with, uh, with another instrument or with another technique. Like when you open the mucopressor elevator and you want to dissect hardly. Okay. It's also, we don't use it in oral surgery. We use it in the general surgery. If you want to dissect under the mucoperistium or the mucopressor elevator, uh, you use it with another instrument. So our main concern is the pencil grip or the pen grasp. We also use uh, hold the handpiece in this uh, with this uh, grasp. So just keep in mind that this is our uh, scalpel holding that we always use it in oral surgery and for short incisions. Regarding to the placement of the incision or the proper placement of the incision always remember to stay on healthy bone okay do not incise on the defect and get away from the defect at least six millimeters circumferentially and always remember to preserve the papilla okay you have to include the papilla in the incision like this in this manner so you include the papilla fully with you not to incise in the middle this is a mistake this, uh, we have to preserve the papilla aesthetically and for uh, the proper functional, okay? Especially in periodontal surgery. So as we said also, here we have to stay six millimeters. And also there is something very important. You do not have to incise on tension areas or prominences like the canine prominence okay so what will 
Why we don't have to do that? Because it will cause something called the flap dehiscence. What does that mean? It means opening of the surgical wound. When you decide to open a flap, you have always to remember to make the base of the flap higher or bigger than the height. So if we consider X is the base of the flap, okay? We make the base of the flap is always wider or bigger than Y. Why? Because the blood supply will be more. So if you increase the base, it will be more blood supply, which is uh, what we want it, okay? So this will increase the blood supply, as we said. If we consider there is like the X, there is an equation we can uh, summarize that X equal to y so it means double the high of the flap always also cut in sharp perpendicular cut not in oblique cut okay this is mistake what why it will make a flap necrosis or decrease of the healing so finally the aim is to avoid the complications doctors flap tearing and the flap necrosis and the flap dehiscence or flap opening. Thank you very much, my friends. I hope really you enjoy it. Please do not forget to do subscribe and see you again in part two of flaps in oral surgery. Have a nice day.